Type 1 diabetes is um, one of the diseases that is most challenging to treat if you are an endocrinologist. And it is because type 1 diabetes has such a profound impact on the life of the people living with it. And so in recent years, we've had now many, many new tools like insulin analogs, insulin pumps, uh, glucose sensors, and also the hybrid closed loop systems that have now come in our hands. But what is the basis still for the therapy of people with type 1 diabetes is the team approach. And I think that in Europe, and particularly in my little country in Belgium, this integrated approach where the whole team with not only the, uh, the specialist endocrinologist or diabetologist, but also the diabetes educator, the, uh, the, the dietitian, the psychologist, and not in the least the person living with the disease, him or herself, is a part of this team is so important. Because in my eyes, it is key to have integrated care when you are talking about treatment of people with type 1 diabetes. In Europe, we have the uh, advantage of having this integrated care in uh, uh, most countries with uh, access that is reimbursed again in most countries through our universal uh, uh, coverage, uh, our universal access to healthcare, uh, organized in different ways, country uh, specific ways, but there's one uh, commonality and that's this principle of solidarity, where every citizen of a country will contribute to a, you know, a bigger or a lesser extent to this healthcare in uh, the country. And when you have this uh, universal healthcare, it means that you do not have to focus so much on administration, but rather on how to treat the person with type 1 diabetes sitting in front of you best. And so we do have access to um, insulin analogs that are now standard of care in the treatment of people with type 1 diabetes, and as said also to um, the technologies like pumps, sensors, and the hybrid closed loop systems. In Europe, we do have, uh, for instance, one of the advanced uh, hybrid closed loop uh, systems, the 780G of uh, Medtronic, that we are using a lot. It's very advanced, and we do see that across the countries in Europe, we are achieving uh, time in ranges, so uh, time spent between 70 and 180 milligram per deciliter of more than um, 70%, which is really important when we're talking about reducing the burden of type 1 diabetes for those living with it. Because if I'm asked what is the biggest advantage of different uh, hybrid closed loop systems, it is really reducing the weight of this rucksack of type 1 diabetes on the back of people living with this disease by these assisted systems. Having a good night's rest, having stable glycemias during the night, and also having a reliable fasting glycemia you wake up with. One of my patients once told me, this makes half of my day if I can start with a good glycemia and do not have to think, you know, how will I correct what is happening, etc. We're looking particularly forward of having not only hybrid closed loop systems with uh, tubed uh, CSII, so with uh, pumps with catheters, but also uh, having intelligent patch pumps. So uh, we're looking forward to having different systems coming to us with patch pumps, sensors connected to them, and then algorithms working uh, with these uh, pumps, adapting, again, the flow of the insulin to the glycemia and also, um, uh, you know, giving boluses when, when people are eating. Again, in Europe, we do have access to multiple uh, systems, to multiple uh, algorithms. For instance, the Diabeloup uh, algorithm, which is an algorithm that came from French uh, endocrinologists who designed this. And it is one of these algorithms that is open to be used with different pumps and also with different sensors. So this is really where I think we're going, namely this promiscuous behavior where you will select the pump, that suits best the person having to carry the pump, the sensor that suits best the person uh, carrying the sensor, and then the algorithm that you know best or that you think is best for the patient sitting in front of you. 
Another advantage of um, uh, living in Europe is that we do have access to adjunct therapies for people with type 1 diabetes. We do have a, a label for uh, use of low-dose SGLT2 uh, inhibitors like dopagliflozin and the mixed SGLT1-2 inhibitor sotagliflozin at low doses in individuals with a BMI above 27 uh, kilogram per square meter. Recently, the company of dapagliflozin did pull uh, the label, but so we have had some experience with these uh, agents in people with type 1 diabetes. And what became clear is that when you use SGLT2 inhibitors in people living with type 1 diabetes, they are efficacious in lowering hemoglobin A1c, in lowering weight, in lowering total insulin dose, but the price you pay is a risk, an increased risk, about 20 to 25 percent of people suffering from genital infections, mainly women, where we use the SGLT2 inhibitors, but also the feared diabetic ketoacidosis is happening. As we published recently in, in Diabetes Care in 2022 by Palanca et al., we showed that in real-world uh, experience, we do see also around three and a half percent of people who in the real world, when they use SGLT2 inhibitors on top of their intensive insulin therapy, do develop diabetic ketoacidosis. And that despite being used in specialized centers with well-trained medical teams and also well-informed uh, patients who are using it. What we did saw was that the label of EMA, namely using low doses of SGLT2 inhibitors and only using it in individuals above, with a BMI above 27 kilogram per square meter, was indeed the safest way to use these adjunct therapies in people with type 1 diabetes. Because using the low dose and also using it only in those with a BMI above 27, we saw the least risk of diabetic ketoacidosis. And so I really hope that in the future, we will see outcome trials also in individuals with type 1 diabetes looking at hard endpoints, heart failure, kidney protection, for instance, because there's no reason to expect that the cardiorenal protection that is seen in people with type 2 diabetes or people without diabetes with SGLT2 inhibitors wouldn't happen in people with type 1 diabetes. And also we had some glimpses about this renal protection in our uh, real world observation study. So it is exciting times in, in Europe where we are able to uh, work in a um, environment of, of universal access to uh, healthcare, where we have access to uh, integrated care, where we have access to novel technologies, including uh, hybrid closed loop uh, systems and also adjunct therapies for people with type 1 diabetes. Mm -hmm.